Good evening, fellow traders. This is Joe Grinder at InvestorsHelp.net, right here on Facebook. Well, it's Monday evening, Memorial Day. I hope that you had a relaxing and a fun weekend, a nice three-day weekend, to rest your yourself and get your batteries recharged for another week. Of course, this will, week will only be a four-day week, so hopefully we can still make some money this week. Several of our friends on Investors Help ask the question, Joe, is there some way to get a heads up on the market before the market actually opens? You know, it'd be nice if we could get a feeling or, as I like to say, a perspective on the market before the market actually opens and yes the answer to that question is there is a way and that's what we're going to go through in the next few minutes on this free video from investorshelp.net so we're going to look at I have a couple tips I'm going to share with you in this video first is how to get a perspective today for tomorrow's market action then I'm going to show you how to use a channel tool for technical analysis. As you probably know, I'm using the Thinkorswim trading platform here. We're looking at a daily chart of the slash ES. That's the E-mini S&P futures contract. Okay. Now, many of you probably don't have access to this because you're not paying or you have not paid for access to futures data. On most trading platforms, even here, uh, wait a minute, no, not here, uh, to my knowledge, not here on the uh, Thinkorswim trading platforms, but on other trading platforms, uh, there is a charge. So that's one of the benefits Another benefit, I should say, of using this Thinkorswim tra uh, trading platform that's available from the TD Ameritrade brokerage firm. So if you don't use it, you might want to check it out and uh, see for yourself. I use this all of the time. So, okay, let's take a look. We're on a, a daily chart from September 17th or thereabouts until the close which is 528 now isn't that interesting the market was closed to bed today in the US but it was not closed today in the foreign markets did you know that that's right okay we have a variety let me briefly review I took a, a suggestion from Neil one of our longtime friends at investors help suggested Joe if you if you like and use the exponential moving average why don't you change your moving averages to EMAs instead of using the simple so I said yes I've been using EMAs for years some of the previous charts I put up had simple moving averages it's not a big deal when two things one you are a very experienced trader and number two, because I believe that technical analysis is more of an art than a science. So whether you use a simple moving average or an exponential moving average, you're going to see about the same thing. The advantage of the exponential moving average is it front loads, gives more weight to recent prices whereas the simple moving averages is an average over the entire uh, period that you select for the moving average. Okay, let's review. This here, as we can see, is the 9. Here we're looking here. The red is the 20. This blue here is the 50 period in this case the 50-day exponential moving average and here's the 200 now I'm using these because they are probably some of the most popular moving averages and in particular the 50 and the 200 a lot of professional traders use 
this information when they cross. For a price action going up, when the 50 crosses the 200, this is frequently a good time to get in. When the 50 crosses down through the 200, it's a good time to get out. Although, as you can see here, if you get out somewhere in this area here, it's a little late. There are better ways that I'll teach you in the future to know when to get out. Okay, now looking closely at this chart, do you see any vertical lines that I really don't need and I'm not using, or at least I don't need for this presentation tonight? That's right. We have this. We have a line here, a line here, a line here, and there's one further to the right that you can't see. These are the different uh, contracts, futures contracts, and we don't need these. As you see, the futures contracts will change. It was the ESZ, well, then we went to the H, then we went to the M. We don't need these for tonight's presentation. So I'm going to show you very quickly how to get rid of it. You do a lot here on the TOS platform by clicking on the wheel. And you will see there are a variety of um, different categories or tabs you can click on. The one we're going to look at, well, let me just run through. There's a general tab, and it gives you a lot of things to select. A price tab, which applies to the price axis. There are things you can put on the time axis. Notice I have the chart currently set at one year. It's a daily chart, and I have five bars to the right that are blank. I like a little area. You can see it over here to the right. Okay. Then we have five or, excuse me, favorite time frames. We have a variety of those here. Appearance. You can set uh, what your candlesticks look like, or in fact. If you want to change your background, you do it down here. If you want to use something else other than candles, you do it here. Okay, now these are some opportunities regarding equities. The one I have turned on right here, I like to see corporate actions. So these are basically when earnings are announced and also the phone telephone calls from corporate. Okay, options. This is what we're looking at. No, excuse me, that'll be next. You can do several things on options. I like to show the theoretical price uh, uh, amount to give me an idea of theoretically what should I be paying or selling an option for. We'll cover that in a future video. This is the one we're interested in today because we're on the slash ES which is a futures contract. So I don't want to highlight the C show contract change events. I don't need that. So we're going to unclick that. We're going to apply it. We're going to click OK. And you see those lines, those horizontal lines are gone. OK. Very quickly, because I've done this before for you guys and gals several times. Price action, we're in an uptrend. You see, look at this, it's beautiful. You have uh, the 9, the 20, and in this case, the 50 and the 200 all lined up beautifully. Look at that. So ever since down here, the 9 went above the 20, okay? So look at this. These are all in alignment going up. So this is a nice uptrend. You could hear, uh, look here to the left, and you see it's just the reverse. The green is the lowest, then the red, then the blue, and of course further on it will cross the 200. But look, very clearly you can see this is in a downtrend. So just looking at a chart with these four moving averages should quickly tell you are you in an uptrend or a downtrend. Okay, that should be very clear to you by now. If not, review some of my previous videos and I'm sure you will clearly understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's move over to this area here. As we can see, we hit a nine 
a high at 29.61 on May the 1st. So I want to zero in on this action here. So we just drag it to the right and highlight it. And then we click here. Okay. So now we're zeroing in. We're still on a daily chart. But as you can see, look at this. This is so beautiful when you see these four moving averages lined up. You are definitely in an uptrend. Now the thing we want to watch for is when do these moving averages change? You see what's happening here? It's so the, the green, which is the nine, it peaked out, right? See, it's no longer high, as high as the previous one. So it's starting to come down. Look at here. The red, which is the 20 period moving average, peaked out and it started to come down. So this should tell you in this area, things are changing. The trend is changing, okay? You got to have your eyes open and you keep watching this every day to see what's going on, okay? So once this, look at this. Now here, you have price action here. In fact, here it closed below these two moving averages. Price action closed here, below, below, below. It was an up day, and even the on an up day, it closed below these two moving averages. Now look what happened. For the first time, it closed, price closed below, the 50. So you you see the market is telling you something here. So now let's see about moving and using a tool we I refer to as a channel. What we want to do is we're going to draw a channel to see what's going on to give you a better perspective. So I'm going to start here at the high and I'm going to tip, take a tip of this one and just extend it to the right and I'm looking for that tip, okay? Now I clicked it once and I'm going to go now to the left and see where the low is, okay? Here's the low, okay? But I'm going to, you see these two lines are parallel, so I'm going to try to draw these somewhere and in this case this is a better fit, although I could draw it here if you like. It's okay too. It, doesn't have to be that precise, but let's let's draw it there. Okay, so now we have a downward price channel. Do you see that? Let me do something else here for you. You see price, it hit this high, and then what? It came all the way down and hit the bottom of this channel. Okay, it went up, and it did not have the strength to go all the way back up here. So it's a sign of weakness. And what happened? Once again, started to come down. It flattened out. It came down. And then look, it went all the way down here. It's stronger because price did not go all the way down to this channel, which is right here. Do you see that? Before it hit this channel bottom, but is showing signs of strength. Okay, we have now two days that have been moving up off of this low point. So let's see what else we can draw to make it even clearer for you. So let's get rid of this, and let's see how else we can how else we can draw the uh, the channel. So I right click on this line. I'm going to say, let's remove the drawing. I'm still on a channel tool, but this time I'm going to see if I can bring it in tighter. Okay, so let's go at the top. And what we could do, we could bring it in even tighter. You see, I like this. Or we could even bring it in tighter. What I'm doing, I want to tighten up that channel, okay? And we could right click, let's say I want to extend this, you right click here on the tool, and we say extend to the left. You see what it did? It moved those up to the left. So now as you can say and see here, we're in a tighter channel, and what happened? In this case, 
price came on the bottom it hit the bottom of our channel okay it moved up and this time it broke out okay but it didn't stay out very long it came back went up and then went down again and it's up so what else can we do to bring you greater insight into what's going on here what we can do we can draw the same tool we're going to leave this one on there we can draw another channel for you look at this we're going to line up off of two or three of these points here okay so we got that part of the channel and let's see what can we do off of this bottom there we go look at this look at that do you see this we came up outside of the channel and we're still in a down channel okay so what we're going to watch for this week this is what we're going to watch for and let me uh, get my tool ready here so I can show you we got a couple possibilities okay one we could hit a resistance here okay let me get my tool I'm getting so excited here about showing you all okay we could hit resistance here that's not a very good circle but you get the idea price could come up hit this resistance and then head back down okay so we should be able to tell that in a day or two okay what's the other possibility price could continue out and move up okay and it could spend another day up and this is what I'm sure you're hoping for in particular if you like playing the long side okay so that's a second possibility we don't know until we see what happens at this point here and I want to do something else we're going to remove this stuff I want to remove these and let's go back to the original channel let's remove drawing and let's remove this drawing okay we're going to use the channel again but let's let's put it like we had it before at the originally it'd be like this you know I like to bring it in tighter and use use these points you, we clipped a little here use this point here and this point so we have three or four touches on that one and this one let's see mm, we got a couple points there that touch but so let's draw it there and let me see here I want to get okay let me go up I was going to want to get rid of this stuff here but let me take another look let's zero in I don't know if any of you all trade off on a one hour chart but you know they're they're a lot of fun to trade off and trade off of and they give you a lot of insight into it so looking here off of a one hour chart as you can see we're pretty much right now in the middle of the range I want to give myself some more room over here so I gotta go back here and I'm going to draw this down so you all can see I'm going to look at equities appearance time that's what I want to find the expansion let's go to 50 just for the sake of showing you and it'll give us more room okay did you see it this expanded to 50 points I had only 10 so it gives us more room there and a little more room for me to draw so I'll enlarge this okay so let's take one more look before we wrap this up I, once again I'm so sorry I'm talking so long there's just so much to share you have a resistance okay first of all we're above you see the blue that's the 50 okay that's acting now it should act as support so even if price comes back there's a possibility that it will bounce off now this is tomorrow being Tuesday okay so keep your eye on Tuesday now here's something else you see this black line that's coming down that's the 200 
So that also could be resistance. As price moves up, it could hit this 200 period resistance and roll over once again. And then we'll be looking for support. <laughs> How's that for a straight line? Oh my gosh. As you can tell, it's what is it? In a quarter to 10 on Tuesday. Uh, no, no, Sunday, no, Monday night. Oh my gosh. Okay, but anyway, you get the point. So there's could be resistance down here. For you all who are purists, let me just change it real quick. And let me draw this in for you. There's going to be uh, some resistance here, but let me go all the way over to here. But I'm going to use this point as a top point. So I'm going to look, 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 look there. And then I'm going to use this bottom point, OK? So I'm going to go to the right, OK? And we could extend this. But this is the support area. So if price does come down, Um, if price does come down, it could bounce off of this area right here. So let me draw. It could come all the way down. That's not going to happen tomorrow. That's not going to happen tomorrow. Okay, what I did just in closing, I went to a weekly chart to show that we had been and have been in a downward channel, okay, for one two, three, four, five, well, four weeks, and we're starting the fifth week. So this is going to be a, a key week to watch to see whether or not price will break out and start moving up from this downward channel, okay? So I encourage you to keep your eyes open. Uh, be, uh, watch tomorrow, Tuesday, to see what happens, and we might get a little bounce here. Uh, don't, don't overdo it. You need to be cautious because we're not in a period here. You see how this was such a beautiful move, okay? We're still in this period here. You see, it's down. This is, oh, excuse me, uh, this, is, this is still coming down. But I'm hoping, wishing, and looking for a bounce one of these days. So, man, I didn't mean to go so long tonight. Uh, you all need some sleep. I need to get to uh, uh, do some more work here, and then uh, we're going to call it a day. So this is Joe Grinder from InvestorsHelp.net saying good luck this week. Hope to uh, hear from you soon. Feel free to leave your comments. If you like us, please like us, and that will encourage me to put up more videos. Thanks so much. So long for now. Bye.